Okay, so the first talk today is about large-scale distributed Bayesian matrix factorization using stochastic gradient MCMC. And the presenter is Nathan Liu from uh, uh, Yahoo Labs. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to this talk. Okay, okay, right. Everybody hear me well? Cool, yeah. So uh, this is a joint work with uh, Song Jian Anu uh, from UC Irvine and uh, Suju Rajan from Yahoo, as well as Max Wedding from University of Amsterdam, uh, who is also associated with uh, UC Irvine. So, uh, so why do we want to do Bayesian, oh, okay. So why are Bayesian methods good for matrix factorization, right? So uh, the, the major problem with uh, collaborative filtering in this kind of reading data is that the reading matrix is usually very, very sparse. And uh, you, you, need, you need to learn a huge model with you know, tons of parameters with very sparse data, right? And uh, there are a lot of uncertainty associated with, 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 your, with, with your model parameters. And Bayesian inference provides a principal way to characterize those uh, uncertainties in the data, as well usually achieving better accuracy, right? So for example, in terms of the capturing the uh, uncertainty part, if you look at the, uh, using a Bayesian method, uh, the latent vectors you learn for these two movies, X and Y, X has very few regions. And if you look, look at the posterior samples for the X vector, it's, it definitely has a much higher dispersion, right, which captures inherent uncertainty with this particular movie. Because you have less data about it, therefore you have a stronger uncertainty about the model parameters. On the other hand, if you have, a, if you have another movie with hundreds of regions, you can see the, learn, the posterior samples for its latent vectors would be much concentrated, which shows uh, much higher, stronger confidence, uh, confidence in the models. Right? So this kind of capability is actually very important, uh, especially in, in, in a lot of recommendation systems, it's not just for predicting the readings. Sometimes we also want to make the decision, like do we want to even recommend something at all, at all right? For example, such as push notification. And this kind of posterior sampling allows us to quantify the uncertainty, and based on that, we can make a decision to say, oh, well, sh we are very certain this is a good recommendation, therefore we are gonna recommend it to you. Otherwise, we probably would not recommend it at all, right? So that's one of the, major motivations for using basic methods for matrix factorization. And uh, previously, uh, there's already a method, uh, BPM was pre uh, proposed in SML several years ago. And back then, for the Netflix data set, it's actually one of the best performing single models, right? And, uh, but the pro problem there is that the computational complexity is, ex is extremely high. So, which is mostly due to the inversion of a, uh, of a square matrix, which is like a cube complexity, right? And if you have ever tried the open source code in MATLAB, so to, to run on the Netflix data set, it can actually take days to you know, produce a full sample and get the state of the art uh, results. As a result, if you look at most of the practical uh, implementations used by industry or in data science competition like KDD Hub, it's mostly still dominated by the frequentist approach. Uh, in particular, you know, vari various uh, variations of the stochastic gradient method. Right? So therefore, our, 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 our major, uh, so the goal we are trying to achieve in this work is basically try to tap into this power of Bayesian method uh, without really, you know, very high computational complexity, right? And that, that is one of our major uh, contribution in this work. And uh, one of the, uh, so before diving into the particular method, I'm gonna introduce several uh, background work, which, which is a theoretical foundation for, for this work. So, one way to scale up uh, Monte Carlo, this kind of uh, uh, MCMC method over large data set is by running this kind of uh, mini batch algorithm, right? And uh, so several years ago, Max Welling and UIT proposed this really nice uh, variant of MCMC method known as uh, sto stochastic gradient learning dynamics, which is uh, sort of rooted in the statistical physics uh, series, which utilizes, uh, so which, which if you look at the form of the update rule or the sampling rule, resembles stochastic gradient very uh, closely, right? So basically, uh, so the, the update rule is like, basically given a mini batch of data, you are gonna compute a, uh, based on a sample, small sample of data, you are gonna get a, a uh, estimate of the gradient over your parameter space. And if you just look at these two parts, it's basically just a typical stochastic gradient descent, right? And the trick is the, in adding in this particular term, which is a Gaussian random noise. And uh, the variance of this Gaussian random noise is also tied to the step length, right? 
and by can by sort of controlling this uh, annealing thing of the saplings and of this uh, of this uh, epsilon parameter, you can see that this method would uh, you know very naturally transition between gradient descent versus posterior sampling, right? So basically, initially, when this uh, sampling is bigger, and then this is basically mostly it will be mostly aggressively trying to do the burning through very fast gradient descent, and after a while. When the when the stabling decreases to a particular level, we're gonna keep it as a constant, and then this Gaussian noise, uh, uh, combined with this stochastic gradient descent step, is basically going to generate the posterior sampling, right? And this was a, a very a very nice method, right? And uh, later on, uh, Sung Jin uh, also generalized this idea to a very large data set to to make it more distributed, right? And the idea is that. When you have a very large data set, you got, you're basically dividing your data set into different shards, and each worker node is going to hold a particular shard of your data and generate samples locally, right? And uh, the beauty is that uh, each chain is going to jump between workers, so that you know uh, those, those those different workers is going to work concurrently to generate uh, to simulate sampling from the whole data set, right? And uh, rather than you know letting each worker only produce posterior samples from a local subset. For example, if if if, it is, if that is the case, you can see if a, if each worker only has a small subset of data, it's not going to generate the posterior sample that approximates the real mode, right? Whereas you combine all the data together, so the the the, the posterior sampling will be approximate the real mode much better, right? and this is the idea. So you have four workers, you have you, you run concurrently run four chains, and each of the worker would be at different time steps would jump jump to different chains, right? So altogether, they're going to uh, you're basically running four full, uh, full, full chains over the, over the entire data set. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, the, so, so to adapt it to the, maybe this slide looks a little bit different. <laughs> Sorry. Let me. Okay. Okay. So for the SGD algorithm, um, Basically, what we are going to do is uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit different. SGD for uh, matrix factorization is a little bit different from uh, other type of MCMC, where, 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 where in which cases, well, even for a small mini batch, you basically can update all the parameters. Right? For matrix uh, for matrix factorization problem, if you random, randomly sample a small mini batch of data set, you are going to only touch upon a small set of rows and columns, right? And that is uh, introducing some problems uh, because uh, if you in the in the SGL in the stochastic gradient uh, Lemon dynamics, so the your, your 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 the stochastic gradient has to approximate the real uh, real real uh, has to approximate the real gradient in, in expectation. Whereas if you do this, you can see that you know if you only get a small sample of data, those rows and columns that are not in your mini batch, they will basically have zero gradient, right? So in expectation, that is going to cause some problems, right? So. Uh, uh, and uh, and uh, one, one trick is uh, uh, so in the paper we show show some show some uh, adjustment which is this uh, hi parameter which is basically equal to the probability of any mini batch of a particular size having a particular uh, id in, in that in that mini batch you need to use that to sort of scale the regularization part in your gradient in order to make sure that then the stochastic gradient is approximates the real gradient in expectation, right? So that is uh, another trick in adapting this SGLD algorithm for the matrix factorization problem. And uh, when we try to distribute it, this kind of bias question gets a little bit more trickier in the sense that, you know, uh, one, one, way of, one typical way of dealing with large matrices is basically try to divide it into sub-blocks, right? So in this case, we can basically divide the matrix into uh, four blocks, right? And each mini batch is gonna sample from now, now this time the mini batch, the bias thing is even even severe because each mini batch can only generate it from as a subset from a particular block, so the bias is even stronger. So, uh, in this kind of setting, this uh, bias correction term on the uh, on the prior part uh, is of a of a, is of a particular different form based on the not do, not just the total data size but also the size of the shard. Right? So this is some of the essential correction you needed for this SDLD to work uh, theoretically correctly. Okay, and uh, so here comes the more interesting part, which is how do we actually scale this up, right? 
So when you, when you run this kind of MCMC algorithm, there are, usually t uh, there are usually two typical ways to achieve parallelization, right? So the first way is uh, uh, you can basically uh, run multiple chains, right? Each chain is handled by a particular worker. And uh, this is, uh, so, okay. So what the first thing is called within chain parallelism, which is basically that, for example, in this case, each, 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 each worker is gonna hold a particular block in uh, each, each each block of the same uh, of the same color is defining a particular way of sharding your data, right? So suppose you have four workers and each of them are holding one of these white blocks, and because they have no overlapping parameters, right? So they can essentially update their own January samples for each of these subset of rows and columns independently, right? This is how you achieve a within chain parallelism by leveraging this what we call the orthogonal block thing, and then uh, so you can also run multiple chains, right? So for example. Well, 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 run multiple chains. For example, you can use four machines to generate samples for these four blocks. In, in the meantime, you can have, have another set of machines that are also, also op op operating with another set of orthogonal block groups and generate samples for them, right? And that is what we call the between chain parallelism, right? And you can, like, divide, the, depending on how you divide your data into different blocks, you can, you can achieve different kind of between, trade off between different kind of between chain parallelism and within chain parallelism. In this extreme case, so all, all three of these schemes work for the case when you have four machines and you want to use, the, all, use all four machines to run this kind of sampling. In this case, you, you try to maximize the, the within chain parallelism. So you have four chains, mm -hmm. each working with four small blocks, right? And uh, each worker can simultaneous, simultaneously work for, the, for all the four chains, right? That is one case. The other case is you basically split, split your data into like by column or by row. And each of them, uh, now each of the worker is gonna handle just one chain and one particular set of parameters. And, and in this case, uh, it's, you can also divide it, leverage some part of it, but making each of the individual small blocks a little bit bigger so that, you know, because the smaller the blocks you get, then the stochastic gradient you, you, you get from this mini batch is gonna have higher, higher bytes and higher variance. Therefore, in this kind of approach, you do not want to, you sort of ex exploit both uh, within chain and between chain parallelism without you know, making your uh, you know, uh, blocks being too small. Okay. And uh, these are some of the experimental results. And we tried, it, or, or we tried this method on both the Netflix data set and as, as well as the Yahoo Music data set. The key difference between these two data sets is that the Netflix data set is much smaller. So you have uh, le much less number of users and much, much less number of items compared to Yahoo. For the Yahoo Music data set, you have uh, tens of millions of users as well as millions of items, which is like nearly 200, uh, 100 times bigger than the Netflix data set. And we can find that when you have a moderate set, uh, when your model is not too, too, too huge, it turns out split by this kind of column or row can actually achieve the best convergence over convergence rate. Whereas you have, when your model gets, gets really, really huge, uh, sp split it by the square to sort of also leverage this kind of uh, within, within chain parallelism is gonna make the convergence work better. And uh, also there's uh, some of the uh, results on increasing the uh, latent dimension. As, as you can see, using basic methods, you don't, you, 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 you don't really overfit as you increase the number of parameters, right? And similarly on, on the Yahoo data set, you see this, uh, you see this similar behavior, and we can see that our method uh, so outperforms both the previous BPMF method as well as some of the distributed SDD algorithm, which is non-Bayesian, right? So, uh, yeah. Okay, so here's the conclusion. So BPMF, so in this paper, we basically we developed a, a much more scalable MCMC method for learning this kind of uh, matrix factorization model, and uh, we leveraged uh, the stochastic reading learning dynamics to achieve the MCMC method. And uh, you know the result is showing that uh, it's doing better than the frequentist approach as well, uh, in terms both of accuracy as well as the runtime convergence rate. Right? Okay, so we hope uh, this is going to provide a practical approach to leverage the power of MSMC for a large-scale data set. Okay, that's uh, that's it. Thank you. <laughs>